All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I am going to detail how I made $100,000 in the month of October. So the first thing is uh, we actually crossed 1.1 million in the Manios compounding machine. And as I say in my monthly letter on Seeking Alpha, it felt like we had just crossed the million. Uh, I knew we were flirting with it. I knew it was going to be close. Uh, and we crossed it by $479. You can see um, total return since uh, May, when I started tracking my returns of 2019 is 80%. CAGR is, I think it's 27 and change. So I just rounded up to 28. Monthly income, 2436. Year to date income. The year to date income includes dividends, option premium, securities lending. Um, so it's a combination of different ways that the brokerage account is throwing off income. Um, so that's that's also very good. Um, and um, yeah, so just we'll, we'll go over here. And this is my monthly update here that I do every month on uh, Seeking Alpha which I really enjoy, though I have to admit, I've put a lot more energy and emphasis into the YouTube videos recently than in the essays, but um, here it is, you know, October 2021 update. Um, so quotations I begin every letter with. Then I talk about App Harvest. I did a video on that, and actually I think I share the video uh, on it here in the essay. And uh, App Harvest is actually already up. Um, slightly, I bought it in the 560 and I think it's over six now. I uh, just peaked at 42. And it's just something, as I say in my video and letter, it's not something from a fundamental perspective of Benjamin Graham, David Dodd, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger kind of fundamental analysis. That's a great investment. It's just something that interests me. It's just something that um, I think has, has tremendous potential uh, for the future uh, in, in ag tech. I think that the ability to produce food um, is, is a powerful thing for a business. And so I think if App Harvest can get the metrics, the algorithms, um, the AI robotics correct, which I think they will in time, um, there'll be some learning curves, certainly. Um, but they already have the distribution in place. These, these grocers, distributors um, are really excited to work with them. So, um, yeah, so I did a little bit of App Harvest there. And then just the idea I talk about, you know, how I made, and it was probably more than nine, but how I made at least 9,000 in my TD Ameritrade account um, on uh, my cruise and the idea of wealth begets wealth. And I say here, once you accumulate your nest egg, the growth of your wealth oftentimes is disconnected from both your presence and labor. So think about that. If you have a job, your wealth or your income, let me say that is probably a better way to say it is directly connected to your both presence and labor, your effort there. Um, but when you, when you acc accumulate wealth, that wealth can multiply without you even taking an interest sometime if it's just allocated properly. Um, so I just talk about that a little bit. And then we get to the numbers here. Um, capital increased $79,502.84 in October, soaring from 1,029,76.98 all the way to 1.1 million 79.82. And then I go through the 80.85 and the CAGR 27.78, uh, all of those things, the option positions. So that's $80,000 there, basically 79.5 in capital appreciation. And then my real estate holdings threw off about 20,000 this month. Um, so that would uh, take it to 100. Um, I think we're about 20,500 in the real estate, um, I have different, uh, real estate holdings. And so that's kind of part of it. I don't include that in the Manios compounding machine because I just, I just include the brokerage accounts that I'm, um, control. And, um, yeah, so that's, um, that's related to that, but, um, yeah, so it's a very, very, uh, you know, an amazing achievement to, to cross that 1.1 and, and to, to do that 100,000. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, the markets are volatile. That, that'll that fluctuate. That could go down certainly even under, you know, a million, a million dollars. That's not, that's not out of the, 
uh, out of bounds there. But let's talk about a couple ways that I got here. Um, and I would say that really my leverage ETF strategies, which are contrarian, and my focus on options, which is also contrarian. You know, you'll see a lot of conservative investors hating on younger investors who are trying to understand options. And I think that comes from a place of, you could even talk about the difference between old money and new money. I think when you're, when you've made your money, when you're either, you know, new money, but you, you're already there or older money, your, your aim isn't to necessarily get rich. It's to stay rich. It's what's called oftentimes patient capital. So a lot of times that conservative element will look down on those who are using option strategies uh, and leverage and so on and so forth. Look, and then there's examples of Archigo's capital long-term management where leverage blows up accounts. So that's, that's certainly a possibility. But for me, um, I remember a few years ago, I said to myself in my head, I think I might, might have written it down as a, as a goal. I said, I need to master options. I need to understand this. And I'm not so mathematically inclined by nature. I'm an English major, uh, minored in art history and classical antiquity. But I was just persistent and stubborn, constantly reading books on it, um, going through scenarios between puts on puts and calls, um, watching different videos uh, on it. And actually, there's two channels now that have just come out fairly recently um, that would be helpful for someone. Uh, one is Pandrea Finance and the other one is Invest with Henry. Um, both of those guys really touch upon options um, and, and mastering that. Now, look, when you're watching this, I'm not saying, you know, to, to do options on uh, AMC and GameStop, but I just feel that if you want to be in the 1% of investors, it's in your best interest to understand and master options. It doesn't mean you're going to use it every month. It doesn't mean you're going to have huge allocations to it. Um, but there's just certain strategies that what I call squeezing pennies, you know, that is going to be able to enhance certain uh, income streams, uh, overall returns. Remember, 1% difference over 20 or 30 years, you know, depending on the account size, can be in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. And so what I wanted to do here is... I wanted to show commonalities. Now, there's a YouTube channel. I'm going to change over here. We'll start with, let's start with Icon. Um, this is a channel, and I highly recommend it. Uh, I watch all their videos, every single one, multiple times probably. And it's called, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Phineas. Phineas. Um, and it's got about 66,000 or so, 65, nine subscribers. And they do these really well edited um, biographies on great investors, um, their background, their influences, how they got started, so on and so forth. And so these three, it deals with um, Steve Cohen, Carl Icahn, David Tepper. And what's the commonality? They're all multi-billionaires. Um, Tepper owns the Charlotte, uh, is it Bobcats or um, I can't remember the name of the, uh, it's the, it's the football team. Um, so I think the Bobcats would be the basketball team, but I don't follow sports much as you can tell from this, but so yeah, he owns a sports team, the football team, um, Panthers. That's what I was looking for. Charlotte Panthers, um, icon, you know, big activist investor Cohen. I don't think he owns a sports, actually he does own a sports team. He owns, he owns the Mets. Uh, also a big art collector. And so the commonality in the early career, all of these guys mastered options. They didn't become multi-billionaires by dollar cost averaging and vanilla index funds. Um, they didn't uh, just sort of follow what you would get in a CFA or MBA textbook. They thought a little bit outside the lines, looked for opportunities, um, and, uh, and that made all the difference for them. So I just want to play a few minutes of each and you'll see that options are part of the story of all three. So let's start with Icon here. So I read a lot about puts and calls. And in those days, that was really the wild west, the puts and calls. And you had all these option brokers, if you remember, and they were fleecing everybody. So I was the honest broker, so to speak. I'd come in and tell everybody, put out a midweek option board. And I'd stay up every night calling people that write in for my report. 
and I'd be calling them from Cal to California, and I had a big following in options, and I'd give them more than they thought they would get, which I couldn't believe. Here's a guy that I don't know from New York calling these, this wealthy guy, and he'll sell, sell 10 calls on this stock, and I'll do it for five grand. I get him six grand. The guy couldn't believe it, right? Then I get him more. And the put call brokers couldn't believe it because they all wanted to give your business back. They said, I know you can do it cheaper cause. And I built this thing up. By 68, I was making seven, 800 grand a year, which was uh, like today, 10 million, 20 million. Here's exactly how it does it. Okay, so there you go. Carl Icahn started, he's basically an options broker um, catering to wealthy individuals. Uh, it looks like they're a, a weekly letter and, um, he mastered the puts and calls and that really propelled him, uh, to wealth. So let's go now to Steve Cohen. So this is a book, I believe her book is, um, black edge. She wrote on Cohen. Excellent book. Uh, I've read it. I have it here in my study, uh, somewhere and, uh, you'll see what, what it discusses here started um, an options arbitrage desk at Gruntel. Brand new on the job, Cohen is already confident enough in his abilities as a trader, making bold predictions about stocks. He's working for Rono Iser, who specializes in options arbitrage. The mathematically inclined Iser was suspicious that anyone can make any predictions of stock price, but he decides to give Cohen some money to make his first trade. To his surprise, Cohen made $4,000 in one day and another $4,000 overnight. In 1978, this was some meaningful profit. So there you go. You see Carl Icahn, options broker. You see Steve Cohen, options arbitrage. Options, options, options. And now we're going to go to David Tepper. Late 70s, options were relatively new. He found that certain option prices are always a bit slow to adjust to the change of their underlying securities. Tepper sees this as a perfect opportunity for an arbitrage. With this pattern, he was able to generate consistent income to pay for all of his expenses in graduate school. Tepper started the firm 26 years ago and is said to have generated 25% annualized returns on average since then. So there you go. Also starting, succeeding in options, pushing his returns into the 20s. And as I've always said, if your returns are in that 20 to 30% over the long term, again, I've been tracking mine for a couple of years, it's irrelevant basically. But over 10, 15, 20 years, if your returns are consistently in the 20s, um, you're going to become very, very rich. Um, and that's what happened with these. I believe uh, Tepper's in the 25, Icon's 29, Buffett is 20, 22. And then you start doing it with other people's money and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I just find that so, so informative, just seeing that the, 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 the commonality there. And that's why I was able to kind of isolate it in the video so you could see that. Um, is the option. So for me, options and leverage have contributed to my success thus far. Um, and we'll see how that plays out in the future. And one of the things that, that I, I do with my options, uh, my option premium, it's marrying what you would consider maybe more risky or, or gambling, if you want to use that term, strategy, is I take all my winnings, if you want to use that term, or option premium, and I reinvest that. So what's fascinating is like this month, I use my option premium to buy something I was passionate about app harvest and the $2,000 position I have in app harvest, um, could certainly go to zero, right? Um, it's very speculative investment perhaps, but that's an investment that 2000 could go to 20,000, 200,000 in the future. So the idea is I'm taking the option premium and reinvesting that back into my compounding machine. Um, so yeah, so that's just kind of the, the overall, so it's sort of marrying a risky strategy with a conservative strategy of reinvesting profits, reinvesting dividends, reinvesting option premium, accelerating compounding by doing that. So, um, that's pretty much it for today. Just wanted to, to go over the results for uh, October, which were tremendous. We're, I was up 78,000. 
Um, and I would say, what job is going to pay me as a salary $78,000 a month? And again, not every month I'm going to make 78, you know, one month I could lose 78, you know, or even more, but just showing you that when you're, when you think in the Robert Kiyosaki's I quadrant, uh, when you think in the I quadrant, generally good things will happen to you. So that's it for today, guys. Any questions, uh, feedback, really appreciate it. Take care.